We're only assessed at 157,000 on the asset. So most people, um, it's, it's just a lot of people want to, look, it's not, the, it's not the, the, the parents, it's the kids want to keep the house for some reason. So they've built the whole thing around that. You don't have to sell your house to go into retirement home. That's, that's basically the concept. And for some people, it's, um, there's a two year rule uh, also that says that they don't assess your house for two years as well. Uh, because there may be cases you go into, a, into an aged care home and then you get better and you can want to go back to your home again. So they give you two years for that to happen because if you have after two years you're still unwell, you're probably not going to go back into your own home. So that's sort of to, to cover that uh, aspect as well. Um, just to give an example of, of the cost structure here from Graham again, uh, he's got his, I got a seventy thousand dollars term deposit. He paid hundred fifty thousand as a refundable accommodation deposit. He doesn't lose any of that, any of that if he leaves the home. Uh, all comes back, and he gets the uh, full age pension. So, in his his case, uh, they've assessed him at a twenty one thousand dollars income, um, and his deemed income is fifteen hundred dollars. Assessable income is twenty two. So he's below the twenty-five thousand dollar fee, uh, the threshold there. So he's not um, he's not going to be assessed as having to pay any extra there on the income test, uh, and also on the assets tests he's passed that. So his cost uh, the um, the cost for that per annum is is only uh, what's he paying six hundred and twenty dollars for his fees there. Um, just to give an example, another this example, obviously someone is fairly wealthy, so he's <coughs> going to have to pay the full cost, uh, and he's going to be paying $126 per day. But bear in mind that you can only that's $25,000 a year, I think is that right? Yeah. Um, and then once he gets gets to the cap of $25,000 for that year, he doesn't pay any more. And then after, if he goes into the $60,000 cap, he doesn't pay any more after that. So. He doesn't get hit with these very high fees for forever and ever. So again, that's that's you know falling to low, medium, or high um, categories. Somewhere there, <laughs> but um, yeah. So basically, the, the aged care the facilities are now much more flexible the way you pay it. Uh, before it was just deposit bond and, and work through the system, um, and of course they're obviously trying to cater for the for the people who've got no money, got to cater for people who've got a lot of money, um, and obviously they're trying to they're going to make the people who've got more money pay. Um, but there's you know. There, for people who don't have enough for the deposit bond, you, you still can get get into retirement, uh, into the aged care homes. Um, that's right. Oops, no, so, um, so basically what I'm saying is, yeah, it, it's, it, the thing is we've got to get through 20, 30 years of retirement. People are getting in their 80s and 90s now, before they go going to uh, aged care. Um, if you don't have enough money uh, to get in, you'll still get into aged care, but what I'm sort of projecting is that the, the costs for government are going up so rapidly that they've got to be able to quarantine this cost a bit more. Um, and the key, the key way they do that is say that you've got to stub up more money and, and potentially have um, uh, less money that goes back into the estate if you die. So what they're going to try and basically do, I think, is, is, is claim back more of the, uh, your, your, your capital uh, in, in the aged care system. But one way they can reduce costs is having people in home care. That's that's really what's going to be the big push. But at the end of the day, when um, when you do have to go into high care, you're going to probably have to pay more for it, especially over the next 20 years. As 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 more and more people get in the system, more there's less and less government revenue. We know that um, there's going to be less revenues to, to be able to cover it. So there's going to be more reliance on us to, to look after ourselves. And that's been the whole push for the last 20, 30 years since the superannuation systems been brought in into Australia. So we just got to make sure we don't get caught out in at the end of our retirement 
by what we spend at the start of every time in saying, uh, you know, as I said, it doesn't sound like a big decision to buy a caravan and a car, but it has a huge impact on your finances over a five year period. And, and the, the amount of money you're effectively losing by not having your money invested and by the depreciation of those vehicles is really where the, where the money's going. Um, not everyone has a, has a caravan with a toilet and shower, but I'm just reusing that to give an example of what a lot of people do trade up to uh, when they do start doing caravan. So um, I think probably that's enough questions there. Any questions going through that? Yeah. Can I just ask you what, how they classify you if you stay in your own home? What, um, what level of care do you have, do you have to pay for that? Ah, uh, yeah, you do pay for it, but it's you get um, it's 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 subsidised. So I, I don't know. I haven't got details on the, what the costs are, but it's not it's nowhere near the cost of going to HP. Russell, would you be better? reverse mortgaging your house to come up with the money? Uh, you could be. 6.15% uh, cost if you have your capital in, if you don't have the capital is, is um, sounds pretty cheap because you've got to remember that with the reverse mortgage you've got compound interest that each year you've got interest on interest on interest. Depending on whether you're in your 80s or 90s, you know, depending on how long you're going to, to be in retirement, um, it may be worth reverse mortgaging, but really the problem then compound interest is that uh, it, it could eat away a lot of the capital value of the house. If, you, if you're not going to be here in 10 years' time, it doesn't matter, but it's the kids who worry about that. You know, that's like, or, as you said, you turn around and sell it. Yeah, that's right. You sell it, then you've got your money, you've not got the rates, insurance, repairs and maintenance, because the house that's being rented doesn't, doesn't deteriorate, because you're not, your tenant's not going to look after it the way you would. Um, so when you come to sell it in say five years time, or the kids come to sell it, they're not going to get the property the same value you would have had if you took that money out of your house, invested for five years, then the kids got their money with interest over the period of time. So yeah, I'd, I'd say more, more likely to sell it if you did have the choice. But as I said, the rules have been basically written around the fact that uh, the kids want you to have the house still <coughs> when you die. But uh, technically, the economic analysis would be that you'd probably best to sell it. Sorry, Bob, you up the back then? I was just saying, you didn't factor in the smelling of the flowers. Oh, the smelling of the flowers, yeah. Right. I mean, in the caravan. Because I've, I've got four driving a caravan, and we've done two trips, and uh, stopping and smelling the flowers has been factored. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, no stressing, there's no stressing like you when you're flying and. Yeah. You've got to book under a hotel and you can't into that one, you've got to go to the next place. And, yeah. You know. yeah. Oh, that's probably a good point. But, uh, oh, yeah, you can never say, you know, there's always no, non-monetary no, non no, benefits there. That was just a, yeah, that's a throw in, yeah. I know. That's, but some people like driving, you know, that's yeah. right. Seeing different towns and so forth. Uh, but we're just looking at the, the, the costs is very high if you're looking at buying a, a big caravan and a, and a big car to go with. So, yeah. Is does it work out now with couples, if one goes in a nursing home, you really are going to be worse off? If you're moderate level? Yeah, uh, it, it, that's right. Because It does got, seem to be changed for the worse for that. You've still got to eat a lot of your capital because you've, yeah. you've got your deposit bond. Um, whether you either pay it yourself as an ongoing payment or you put the deposit bond down, you're going to be worse off. Because yeah. mm. you've got two, effectively running two houses yeah. with mm. care in one. Mm. Yeah, am I? I'm interested in, in the uh, refundable bond. Yep. What happens to that? Is it used by the, the home that you go yeah, to home. derive income for them? Yeah. And then right. at the end of when it when it is refunded at the end, you just get the nominal value back. Yeah, it's your starting value. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you, they're using that as a, as a subsidise to cover their costs of accommodation, mm -hmm. um, which often means that it covers the cost of renovation at the end because they you know usually just rip out the carpets, repaint, and, and start again. Uh, with that, so is it that combination cost plus you know there's the rates, insurance, repairs, maintenance, all that sort of stuff on the uh, on the facility. But there must be money in it because a lot of private sector <laughs> got people going into it. Um, <coughs> one because there's a demand, uh, but two they it seems to be that the building companies are getting involved like Leighton's and uh, Leighton's and uh, who's the other ones? Building and lease, yeah, because they can build it cheaper than. Well, anyone else can because they've, they've got the cost of capital, and they can then have a service company to run the run the home 
the retired aged care home as well. The other one, Russell, is you'll notice a lot of places going up now, uh, Booper. Booper, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Which is all. Yeah, so that's right, yeah. yeah Jim? Russell, yeah. what's involved with this home care package? What, what is it? What, do you get some benefit for staying in your own home? Well, you get, yeah, you get, you get, you get the services, you know, a nurse, um, they, oh, they cleaners. cleaners and that sort of thing, uh, which means that you don't have to, to leave your home. So it's, I don't think you get payments, I'm not sure, I haven't really looked into it. Um, Laurie, would you, you've just looked into it, haven't you? Yeah, but, um, but the key thing is, yeah, you're getting services that would mean that you don't have to leave your home. And that's the main thing, is it's much easier to have your, your own home. But a lot of that's Monday to Friday, not Saturday, Sunday. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. Some of them do do weekends. Yeah, do they? But it's, yeah, it's expensive. and it depends on your means. Is it? Yeah. As to how much you pay. If you haven't got much, then obviously cheaper and you get subsidised. Mm. But I think the more means you've got, the higher the cost. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But they'll come in, you know, three, four, five times, you know, a week if you want it, or you can have them in three times a week. Or oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you set your, they set your uh, standard yeah. of care yeah. based on your situation. Yeah. So. And as I said, some will come in and clean, someone will come in and put you in the shower, some will come in and do your wash, you know, oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, Just yeah. what level of services you require. Mm. Uh, yes, but it's well, not night time. Oh, right. You're right. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's good. So, uh, yeah, well, I think that um, covers it. But it's a fairly complex area in the sense that you really you have to look at a case by case situation. But I hope it gives you an idea that uh, what the costs are in aged care. Um, but the uh, the main thing is it's going to be uh, well, it's going to be a it's growing industry and and, and obviously uh, the costs are going to keep going up over time. So. Um, so it's best to have a bit too much money than too little, that's my, my argument. <laughs> Which most people here are aware of themselves, so it's not a problem, but you know, it's going to be people who haven't provided for themselves very adequately. That will, um, they won't, they'll still get in the aged care, but they probably won't get the um, facilities and they won't have the choice of facilities, that's the thing. Um, because some of these facilities are where you, you share with two or three people. Um, do you want to do that when you're, you're not, not feeling that well? Uh, they mightn't have an ensuite, they might be places where you don't get the same sort of um, standard of, of facilities. Yeah, sometimes it's just a room. Mm. Right. For Russell, if you keep the caravan, you can park the caravan at that. <laughs> 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 also, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's good. Well, thanks for coming, and uh, this is our last seminar for the year, but uh, we'll do another one in February, March next year. So, uh, that gives you an idea.